actually not that late right now. But anyway, hello, good morning. Um, welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. If you're one of my 101 subscribers. Um, well, first things first, actually, thank you to the 101 people who are subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate that especially since I haven't been super consistent lately. I've been going through a lot. Um, I've been going through a lot for a long time. That's really what makes it hard, going through a lot, is the that it's unending. <laughs> I'm okay, though. I'm going to be okay. Um, and I hope everyone who's watching this especially, but everyone in general, is also going to be okay. If you're not okay right now it's hard out here so again thank you to everyone who subscribed really excited to hit that milestone um, but I was actually kind of like dreading it a little bit if that makes sense well let me explain first I was dreading it a little bit because I was at 99 for a while and I hadn't uploaded um, a longer video. I've been putting up YouTube shorts if you've seen those. Hi. Um, I've been putting up YouTube shorts because those are obviously a lot easier to film and I don't really edit them that much. Just like stick a sound on it and like release them. But I hadn't done a longer video in a while. Why is the camera's getting so dark? So as I was saying, I was kind of dreading it because I was at 99 subs for a cool minute and I hadn't uploaded a video so in my mind I was like I <laughs> it was like I haven't done enough to deserve it was like I haven't done enough to deserve 100 people caring about my channel um So, anyway, in my last video, I'm pretty sure I said I was going to do either um, a gratitude video or I was going to have, like, a research topic. Um, I have just, <laughs> I've given myself permission to do, to do neither of those. And that's just how it's going to be. So that's fine. I do want to get back to uh, what I was working on at the time, though, because I was, I was really, like, in a mood where I was, like, done, 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 um, banging out all my bullet points, but I got to a point in my, like, talking points where I was just, like, I'm, I'm wiped out, and I think it was because I was interrupted. There was something else that I ended up having to prep for, so I put all my attention um, into that. And it stressed me out. <laughs> but that's done now, so eventually I'm going to have to go back to my first project. I... I think it is a problem that I do that. That um, if I get interrupted with a project to do something else that has like more urgency, um, especially if the first project is something that it's really only for me. When I finish with the thing that interrupted me, I like don't, I don't have the motivation to go back to like what feeds my, um, creativity or, um, what feeds my like creative urge, if you will. Or like fulfills me creatively. I just like don't. I'm just like exhausted. And in general that's the annoying thing about living in this world. <laughs> One of the many annoying things about living in this world is that a lot of the times the things that like matter to you or are like fun for you. are not the things that have to take precedent or um, are not the things that have urgency. Like, 
it's a lot easier to break a promise to yourself than to someone else, if you know what I mean. I'm trying to keep myself focused. Okay, I'm back. So the thing that's like on my mind today, or really it's two things, but it's one thing. So you know how like on the internet, the thing people love to say is bring back shame. I, I don't really like that saying, period. I think um, a lot of the time these like sayings that or like fr phrases that get really popular lack precision which is why they get so popular because they can apply to more people like the less precise they are um even though they have it has like an underlying sentiment that people like understand you know what i'm saying so like uh, another one that i didn't like was <laughs> When people were saying traumatize your parents back, um, there's a sentiment to it that I have an understanding of, but I couldn't get past this idea of like, actually, you shouldn't seek to hurt people, even if they've hurt you. Like, I... I just felt like it was lacking precision because I understand, oh, this is a tangent. <clears throat> I do understand the idea basically is more like, don't, not even don't spare their feelings, but like tell the truth to your parents. Don't like hold your tongue so much. Don't put their feelings before your well-being and your boundaries. Um, and let them know that, like, you're an adult, you make your own choices about who you will and won't be around, and you're going to hold them accountable for their actions. Great. <laughs> but, um, when someone says traumatize your parents back, what I, <laughs> what comes to my mind is, um, this person who is already traumatized probably probably from their own parents or from other like life situations and the idea of re-traumatizing them like specifically seeking to harm them in their most vulnerable like places um for like to no end like for no reason really like it sounds so unproductive and unhelpful to like both parties it's just like um it's revenge not progress to me so i was like i understand the sentiment and the way that people were using it but i was like that's not precise enough because i can't get the other side of it out of my head where i'm like no that's bad don't do that it's like even though i get it I can't get behind saying that to someone who might not get it. You know what I mean? So, so when people say bring back shame, I agree to a certain extent that some stuff, it doesn't need to be online. But I, I can't get behind just advocating for people to be ashamed of themselves. Like, I'm not going to be on team shame. <laughs> and, but the thing is though, like, shame on its own, it's not always bad. Like, there are healthy ways to experience shame. Like, all emotions are just information. Um, I ended up looking this up because I was like, okay, so what is healthy shame? And... <laughs> The consensus I was coming to is you, it is healthy to feel guilt, shame, and remorse over your actions 
or behaving in a way that doesn't meet your your standards for how you for example want to treat people or even I don't even fully want to say how you think about people because I do think sometimes like the thoughts that come through someone's head are like that are like super negative about other people are either like societal conditioning or like intrusive thoughts and those it's like you can mentally correct yourself and be like hey you know it's very unfair of me to think that about this person or um this person doesn't deserve that um i don't think you necessarily need to be ashamed as long as you recognize that it is wrong and you don't need to tell people you don't need to tell people every thought you have so looping back around this is where i'm coming to like i understand what people are like bring bring back shame i think really it's bring back inside thoughts you like everything that crosses your mind it doesn't need to be heard by somebody else and i think people are sort of incentivized sometimes too much to just like blurt out whatever comes to their mind shame does have a use like say you have an outburst and like snap on someone and you like really didn't need to do that it is useful for you to be able to reflect on how you behaved um how you made someone else feel and be like hey i don't feel good about having done that and then hopefully you would um best case scenario you would be able to address that with them and like apologize that would be nice but um even if you can't do that at least you can reflect on that and change your behavior in the future so you can keep continuing to learn and grow even if you weren't doing something that was like unforgivable but it was kind of cringe your ability to look back at yourself and be like oh cringe that shows that you've grown in like your understanding but the things society tells us to be ashamed of are not always things that we should be ashamed of. So to just say like, shame, bring it back. I'm not willing to be on team shame and tell people like, you should be more ashamed of yourself. I, I think that co has caused way more harm than good in most people's lives. And most people should actually be less ashamed. Um... But I do get that it's coming from this place of, like, you oversharing this way is actually putting yourself and other people in harm or in danger. Or even just, like, it's unnecessary for you to, like, confess to having these thoughts or doing these things that on their own, like, maybe it's past or it doesn't matter anymore or, like there's no harm done but by saying it you're doing harm to people like if you have a prejudiced thought and you put it out like into the internet like oh i used to think this then by saying that out loud even though you've corrected yourself already in your head that that's not okay to think you're by saying it you're hurting people who are receiving that message who happen to like swipe up on tiktok or something and see you saying or doing that you didn't need to expose yourself but because you did not only did you hurt um not only did you make people around in general just feel unsafe but like you sort of diminish your own character like because you felt like it was appropriate to say that it's like, now I don't necessarily trust your judgment. You know what I'm saying? You don't seem like a person I'd want to be around. And the other thing is, like, hopefully people would have a safe space, like, of, like, a group of friends or maybe even just one friend, one friend who's, like, understanding or who, like, knows you enough to give you the better the benefit of the doubt and like some extra grace and tolerance to where like you can share like oh i think it's um interesting or funny that i had this thought or i did this thing in the past and you can even like discuss it with them 
and you know that's not something that they'll just like share around with everyone uh, hopefully if you have a good friend <laughs> um, they're not just spreading your business it's not something that has to come outside of that bubble at the same time though I feel like this impulse people have to really pour out everything that's on their mind expose like everything um, in a way that's not like safe and healthy necessarily all the time is because of this other like phrase or idea that circulates that everything is content my my take on the idea everything is content is like you know how in ratatouille so in Ra in ratatouille the chef character gusto he has this catchphrase anyone can cook and the like antagonist or one of the antagonists um in the movie is the food critic anton ego he really despises that saying because you know he's a food <laughs> he's a food critic um and he's really harsh he shuts people down at the end of the movie he gains this new understanding over this phrase uh, after finding out his favorite food was cooked by a rat where he says something to the effect of it's not that anyone can be a great cook it's that a great cook can come from anywhere so a bit of a long walk to say my feeling on the phrase everything is content is it's not that everything is content it's that great content can come from anything if you <laughs> if you're the right person and you present it in the right way things that you would have never thought would be worth watching or reading about or looking into can be extremely compelling and interesting.